All right, so you should be able to see this slideshow now. Um, so uh, as I said before, this is introduction to Wet AI, and the idea with today is that last week was about the, uh, the high level uh, reasons why uh, we want weed, green on green weed detection. Um, and this week is all about the specifics of uh, weed AI itself and actually uploading to the platform. So it should hopefully be more of a a reference tool as well for the future. So if you have people that are interested, uh, you can potentially just send them either this webinar series or just this video as well. And uh, I'll be quite detailed in how I go through it. So uh, this will obviously be recorded as well. So the overview of today's uh, presentation, we'll start off with a little recap of what we went over uh, last week. And uh, then I'll do a quick uh, demo of uh, image annotations, but I'll just to uh, I uh, know Brad said raised some uh, issues with uh, that with the, the medic, uh, but also just to show you guys how I might approach it. Um, and maybe there's, I'm not sure what the tool you're using, Brad, but maybe there's a different tool or uh, that, that might make it easier, but it, it does get difficult when you try and when you remove that contextual information from, from the image. Then uh, we'll also go over data set preparation. So how do we actually fill that, that whole pipeline from uh, the uh, problem definition through to uh, ag context and metadata definition or uh, preparation that is specific to weird AI. And then finally, the, uh, the upload process uh, is at the end. We'll go through and uh, actually upload a loaded data set uh, that I collected probably a few weeks ago here now in, in College Station um, of Palmer Amaranth and Cotton. Uh, but I'll go just to upload a, a subset of that one uh, and we can hopefully see it appear on the website in real time. And then finally, just a bit of a where to next. Uh, Wit AI is obviously always in development as an open source platform. And then uh, a Q&A at the end, uh, see what you guys think about it. Uh, but also just to, of course, we can have that discussion as we go through. And if you are following along at home, uh, you can open up the website uh, at any point and just track along what I'm talking about and, and do it for yourself in a second screen or on the, on the other screen and have happening in the background just so it's more, um, uh, more clear. So just to briefly go back over what we did last week, the, this is what we're after. So these four levels of uh, detail for classification, object detection, semantic segmentation, and instance segmentation, that's what we want and what we really need out of our uh, detection and, and deep learning algorithms. So the reason we're doing all this and developing these data sets and publishing this data is that we need the, the, this to be a reality for all sorts of crop situations. So for the medic in, in lentils, also for turnip weed in, in, in uh, wheat or ryegrass in wheat uh, or weedy carrots in late season canola, I think, Lorenzo, uh, for your data set. It's a whole range of different, different scenarios and, and species. But the problem with that is, uh, is the barrier of needing that large quantity of high quality imagery. Uh, so we need the, the high quality, but also the annotations to go with it. So we need to know what is in that image, uh, where those weeds are, and uh, have every single weed, if we want to generalize across all the weeds labeled, and also have that diversity of environments, so different lighting conditions, uh, different backgrounds, sunlight, uh, soil, maybe some it's too dry or uh, some it sh should be directly after rain, so it all changes the appearance of the plants. And then growth stages as well. So uh, we know that these two palmer amaranth are the same uh, species, but to a computer, they look vastly different. Uh, so this one is a very early growth stage and this one's more mature. So for us, I guess the chemicals to control them might be similar or the weed control method might be similar, uh, but to a computer, then the pattern, the, the, uh, the similarities between them might not uh, be there. So how do we annotate these and how do we capture that, that diversity? And then finally, the seasonality of agriculture makes it difficult to uh, do this regularly and uh, consistently throughout the different parts of the growing season. If you only get one shot at growing cotton at this time of year in these types of lighting conditions and uh, with these sorts of weeds, uh, because biology is very difficult to control uh, effectively. So that's the, the other confusing aspect. Uh, so what we're doing is developing with AI to try and help solve that barrier. So while there are other data sets that exist at the moment, you can go and download images of, say, I think a carrot weed in a 
sugar sugar beet or I think there's other data sets of uh, wild radish in wheat. They are all just located on distinct servers and, and distinct websites. And they're not all together and have the same metadata reported. And they're not easily accessible in, in, in one spot. So what we know I was trying to do is fill that gap where everyone can upload uh, images. They can, or they will always be in the same format. So they all have that wheat cocoa format. They have the contextualized agricultural information so we can try and make sure that it's uh, searchable and people can download relevant information. And uh, also, uh, of course, it's that a community development so people can keep them contributing to the development of it. And uh, it's all open source and, and transparent about uh, the data, the licenses, uh, those types of things. So it builds up this uh, capacity to start developing new algorithms, new architectures, and, and have research and development that might not have otherwise been possible. So that's, if you want to go along to Wet AI, these the links here, the repositories uh, down the bottom here. Uh, and I'll, I'll run through the sites uh, and go through the specifics uploading shortly. Uh, but first, I'll just take you through the data set upload process. So this is the basically the, from the start, the whole pipeline, from the start uh, to the end. So at the top here, you have the generic uh, problem definition, data set collection, and annotation stages. So this is consistent across all types of uh, machine learning and uh, data set generation or image data set generation. So it's important always to have a problem that you're solving. So why are you collecting images? What's the, what, what's the kind of solution you're looking for? And make sure the data you do collect matches that as well. Uh, so that's the data set collection that fits with the problem. Then of course, annotation. So what kind of output do you want from your algorithm? Then decides uh, the image annotation process. And of course, the algorithm output is then dictated by the weed control solution too. So that by having uh, this image annotation stage, you have to make sure it fits with the data set collection as well as the, the problem as well, so that they all flow into one another. And as we move down to this bottom level, we have to, this is when we go into the, the weed AI specifics. So this is where we start doing ag context generation. So this is a standard metadata format for everything related to uh, the data set. And this is data set wide. Then there's the metadata generation. These are things like authors' names, uh, data set title, uh, digital object identifiers, so DOIs, if you reference, you get uh, recognized for the work. And then finally, we bring all this together and uh, upload it to an AI. And this is the, the process we'll be following uh, today. That's all good. Then the next part of the process, or the first stage, is assuming that we've had a problem defined, is uh, the image collection. So some of you, so it sounds like, uh, Brad and uh, Lorenzo have uh, been out and collected some data over the past week or had data existing and have uh, annotated and, uh, or tried to upload and go through this process. And basically the, the important part of image collection is making sure you have your consistent parameters. So you have data set wide consistency. So you have camera height, uh, type of camera. So it might be a phone or a specific machine vision camera, your angle or your lighting. Or well, the lighting is sometimes difficult with clouds, but as long as you report that, that's the important part. And of course, the Weed AI supports all types of imagery. So it can be different cameras or different heights or angles. It's just that within each data set specifically, you have to keep that consistent. So then the person using your, or your data uh, knows the uh, specifics of it and how it might fit with their models or how it might fit with their, their use case. At the same time, it's important to record your metadata too. Uh, you can either write that down on a um, bit of paper and then record it and make a file later, or uh, you can even make the ad context file on your phone. Uh, the the uh, website does support that too. And then finally, saving back up, make sure you don't lose that hard, that hard work. Uh, these are just two examples of different data collection types. So this is uh, in Narrabri, and you can see you've got two cameras um, and so over the chickpea plots. And it's, it's Linda <laughs> for taking that data. Uh, and then this is just an example of, say, using a phone camera where you take it at consistent heights and you just say put it at your shoulder height or out from uh, the most user-friendly height or say you pre-measured it but just you want to keep that consistent so you can report that uh, height at the end and of course there are many other ways of collecting data but these are just a couple of the way we have used so then there's the uh, image annotation so this part i'll show you a live example using label label image so this is one i use and it, it's useful because it uh, is based on your computer. So you don't have to worry about uh, potentially 
going online, uploading images, having a dodgy internet connection. As long as you have the program installed, uh, you can use it. It is uh, this somewhat more difficult to use than others uh, in that you do have to start it from the command line. So what I'll do here, so I'll just start it from the other screen. So you So then you should see this window pop up. So I can, I'll send through links to, or I think last week I sent through the links to the label image website, which goes into details of how to install it. Uh, and I find it, it, is, it is very useful uh, just to label images uh, quickly and, and, um, and on your own computer as well without going through the hassle of the online, uh, well, online platforms. I guess we have to download the data afterwards as well. The first thing is to open up your image directory. So I'll uh, just, this is an image, uh, ones I've done before. So uh, this is a Palmer data set. So you select that folder and that will pre-fill all the images. Uh, it also pre-fills all the annotations because I have it set separately. But if you want to change the save directory, this is where the annotations go. You can also uh, select that. So select VOC, this is where I want it to go. Uh, select that folder and it should show. So now you see the image uh, that you're trying to annotate and you, when this is potentially a lot simpler than uh, the medic scenario that the Brad was talking about. Uh, but once you have the, uh, the, the weed you want to uh, identify and label, so you should have a list of all the different types of uh, glasses you're trying to label, then you go through that image in a very uh, consistent format. So usually I start at the, the top left and then I'll go down and label the ones I want that frame, keep them scrolling down, label the next ones, and uh, go down further. I guess what's important to note here is that you should try and get pulp plant within that bounding box. So you want to make sure that even the edges of the plant are included. So leave maybe a buffer of a few pixels. And so that way the, the algorithm can start to detect uh, the edges of the plant. What you don't want to do is cut off some of those edges. So then it thinks that the green plant is all, always has that straight uh, straight line through it. So try and keep those edges in, uh, move through the image consistently, uh, get all those occluded ones as well. So this is a, a Palmer Amaranth stuck behind a, a Johnson graphs. So you want to make sure you get all the occlusion, occluded sides of that. So through about there. Um, maybe drop this one down to there. You can see it through there too. And uh, just go through all your images uh, like this. I think that's something else. There's a very small palm there. Uh, and then basically that's, that's the process of annotation. So it can be quite tedious depending on the number of weeds, the type of weeds in the scenario. Uh, but I'll just, I've done these before, so I'll just, I guess, say, go through the, the basics of it. But once this is done, is there any questions about the annotation process? The one thing I'll point out is as well, you can, with label image, you can select your uh, annotation format. So this is where I've selected XML format for the, uh, the VOCs, XML is a file, VOC is the, the type. Uh, that can also be YOLO, which is a different format, but um, Pascal VOC is the much more common, uh, commonly selected format, I guess, and one that is supported by Weird AI for uploading as well. Right, so assuming these are all done, I can flick through them all. Uh, so I've been through this and just annotate the palm amaranth. That should be all good. So now we can go on to the next stage of this. And actually, I'll just show you while we're here uh, what a XML file actually looks like. So this is what an annotation, uh, this is what the computer gets, I guess, in the, uh, the, uh, the training part of the, um, the program. So as you can see, it has where it's stored, file names, and uh, the important parts are when you come down to the objects. So VOC annotation formats, they have uh, a single file per image. So you'll have the same number of XML files as, or you should have the same number of XML files as you do images. And that's a good way to check that you've annotated everything. If you don't, then you're, you'll be missing uh, an annotation and Weird AI will, uh, will pull you up on that as well. But what you, want to, what you can see is that the bounding box here uh, shows where in the image that weed has been labeled, uh, what the name of the weed is. So this is the class here is called Palmer Amaranth, uh, but it could be called anything. Uh, you could call it 
class one or class PA, whatever is, uh, whatever is useful for you. And then this is the bounding box that covers that, uh, that weave. So it's in the pixel number 465 from the top left. And then that's the X minimum. The Y minimum value is 500 down from the top. The X maximum is 502 from the top left and then the Y max as well. And that way it uses everything within that bounding box uh, that actually uh, will uh, train that, that algorithm to learn what the patterns are across all those different parameters uh, as it goes through the, all the different images and all of those bounding boxes. So there's an object for every single uh, one of those bounding boxes that we saw in that first image. And that's, that's all from here. And so this is, the, this is the Pascal VOC or BOC uh, format. And each file is an XML file. To keep those. Yeah, that's the annotation. Uh, and the next after annotation. Sorry, Guy, you yeah. um, mentioned um, not cutting any weeds off when you're putting the bounding box on. What happens if the weed is cut off by the camera? Uh, that's, that's where you start to make your own rules, I guess. Uh, so there are possibly a few examples of that. Uh, so all in there, but the idea is that when I do it, I set myself a rule of about thirty percent of a plant needs, to, or more than thirty percent of a plant needs to be in the frame, and it needs to have distinguishable features uh, for it to be labeled. Um, so if it's absent, or um, if it's just a cut, it's just a leaf protruding in, I uh, don't annotate it uh, for for this method anyway. It depends on how you're annotating and uh, what you're annotating as well. So if it's like a semantic segmentation annotation method, so that's where you're going around and drawing a line around every green pixel of this cotton uh, plant, then you'd have to label every single pixel that belonged to cotton. And that would include uh, just really close sort of edges or half points. But for bounding box, uh, it's, it's about, um, I guess, setting strict labeling guidelines. It's just yourself, it's fine as you can follow along, but if you have other people involved, you need to be clear about uh, what you include and what you uh, discount. Um, and that's just, it's one of the vagaries, I guess, unfortunately, in machine learning, as long as it's just more about it, um, looking for what you want to detect. Does that help or? Yep, thanks. Awesome. They, they do say machine learning is sometimes a bit of an art and uh, science, but um, I guess that, that's, that's one part of it. Uh, so when Lorenzo just asked about if I had preferred image sizes to start the tagging process, uh, it depends um, on, we were discussing this earlier today, actually, it depends on what, your, uh, what you want to get at the end or what your deployment pace is. So, uh, the, the performance, the, the paper published recently where performance declines with reduced uh, resolution. So the, the lower resolution images, the worse your performance is likely to be. That was just in one, in one case of the cotton uh, in one particular field. Uh, but it, it makes intuitive sense that, that uh, as the resolution goes down, these tiny weeds, if you're trying to detect uh, grass, they're going to be lost to the background. Uh, for the tagging process, so I guess it goes back to the question that for the tagging process, you then want to annotate as images as large resolution as is, is possible, because you can always downsample that, so you can always drop the resolution uh, quite easily. But it's really difficult or you know, basically impossible to, to increase the resolution once you've collected that in, those images. Uh, so that's why for labeling it doesn't really matter too much. I guess what image size it is, uh, but it's just relevant to how you deploy it in the field uh, because obviously with bigger images when you're actually running the algorithm on the image it takes a longer time because there's a lot more data uh, involved for every uh, every pixel as one more part of the image has to analyze so it will run slower and larger, larger images is, is, is the trade-off i guess um so that's so that answers the question right so that's the image annotation process. Uh, so now we'll move on to the ag context uh, generation. So this is uh, the next step in that, uh, that 
flowchart of, of uploading to AI and just generating data sets in general. But that context is specific to AI, and it's one of the first, I guess, in that it's uh, a actual standard for weed specific uh, metadata so that people in the future can come back and see these data sets and understand how uh, they fit within their own data or uh, where there might be gaps or, or those types of things. Uh, so, and gaps, I guess I mean by the, the contextual gaps so things like soil color or surface coverage, uh, which plants are there uh, in the background or what was there, things like crop type uh, that it's present uh, in. And that helps I better understand potentially your, your gaps in your, your model performance and where those weaknesses lie. And, and uh, also of course, gives us the ability to search through the images as well. Uh, and then if we have a diverse enough data sets, we can start to look at the ability of models to generalize too. And of course, by having a standard, then you also get interoperability. So these data sets can all be shared, downloaded, analyzed in the same way, because they all come with the same metadata and all those, all those uh, data in the same format. And uh, finally, I guess it's that benchmarking opportunity by having particular data sets grouped by uh, particular uh, attributes, then you can start to look at how different architectures, so different designs of models can perform on the same data. And uh, by understanding how the data is collected or, or the type of information that's there, the contextual information, then we can understand how different models might perform in different scenarios too. So that's the theory of it, but I'll show you the actual egg context generator itself. Let's go to we now are here. And to get there, you can either navigate to the bottom of uh, one of these sorry, on the upload page. You can navigate to the bottom here where it says prepare for upload and click on construct and save an egg context file. Or you can just go to weedai.sydney.edu.au slash uh, editor. And that will take you there as well. So this is the egg context editor, as we saw in that picture. Uh, and you can select a whole list of uh, items here for your crop or other attributes. This is where you can do it and download it separately. So you can actually open this up on your phone, type it out, download it to your phone, and upload it to your computer if you wanted to do it in the field. Uh, but the potentially easier way to show you now is actually to do it directly in the upload uh, process. So where uh, as you step through the whole the upload, you, it will bring you uh, up a dialog box with the ad context in it, and you can fill it out as you're about to uh, submit this to Weed AI. So I'll do that instead of going here. So go back to Weed AI, go to upload. And uh, I guess now we can actually start uh, the upload process. So if you do an upload to Weed AI, uh, and I'll, I'll get back to that, I know that uh, pipeline of generating metadata and then finally uploading, uh, this all it, it comes across in the upload process. So. As you step through, you, you upload your VOC, then you go to your uh, uh, context and also your metadata, and then find the images. Uh, so it will, it will come out in, in this process of uploading. Uh, but of course, if you get uh, any questions about the process, make sure uh, you, you ask them and I'm clear about it. So uh, this is the upload page. So when you first go to Weed AI, you'll, you'll be directed to the about page. So this is where you can read about with AI. The explore page is where we have all the images and the upload page is where you can uh, start uploading things. So today we're gonna to try the VOC format. So VOC, and you can see that uh, these are the formats that are currently supported. So we have Pascal VOC, XML. So the XML is the file type. And you can see that's supported by bounding box annotation. Uh, we also support the weed cocoa style. So that's where everything's been converted. And if you have, uh, want to do that at the command line, you can download the uh, Weed AI repository and there are converters to do that for you at the command line. And of course, we can also do the MS Coco, the common objects in context format, which Weed Coco is based on, that can be uploaded uh, separately too. And finally, color coded segmentation masks. So if you have instance or semantic segmentation files, then you actually have a mask, an image file for every image, and that tells the, uh, the computer where each of those pixels uh, belong. And so that's also supported. But today we're sticking with thinking simple on the VOC and uh, now you can start uh, uploading. Uh, what I should say is that you will need to log in previously. Uh, so if I log out here, you can press uh, sign in, sign up or sign in with Google. 
So sign in brings up this dialog box. Uh, sign up, you will have to just type in a username, make sure you remember that, an email address and a password. And then finally, sign in with Google, uh, just signs in via your Google account. Uh, I kind of prefer this, it's just easier to keep everything in one, uh, one place and it remembers me. So uh, I'll go with that. This is just from a previous upload I was testing uh, yesterday. So yours should come up with none and uh, nothing else here. But all right, so we'll go back to the box. So begin upload, and this is that uh, workflow I've shown you. So first thing is to upload all those annotation files. So I'll go back to the folder that I saved them all in. So these are all the annotation files that I've done earlier. And they were saved there by label image. So you might have them in a separate folder or saved separately. I, I try and keep them uh, separated the images in one folder and the, the box files in another folder, just so it's easy to upload and, and keep things keep things apart. But I'll just drag and drop those in here. So you select 13. You'll see that each uh, file name, file size, and then the upload progress bar should be complete. So once they're all uploaded, then you can press submit and that will add them to the, uh, the process, I guess, and uh, get everything in order. And you click next. And here you can uh, set the role of that annotation. So in label image where we had Palmer Amaranth on the right here, that's your class name or your, uh, like that's what you're calling everything. So uh, what you can do in with AI is set that Palmer Amaranth, the role and the species, because you could have called that PA or weed one or weed two, depending on what was relevant. So you have to actually set that a species and a role. Now the role is an interesting part that's specific to agriculture because often you have a volunteer uh, crop uh, coming up in a uh, current season crop. So for example, you might have canola, which is obviously a crop coming up in the, in the wheat in the following season. And so in that case, the role of the canola isn't as a crop, it's as a weed. And uh, the, that's why you have to specify whether the, what we've labeled is a weed or if it's a crop as well. And also you might be labeling a uh, cotton image like we had before, and you might have actually labeled all the cotton in there uh, too. So then you can search by a crop or by weed. In that this case, Palmer Emirate is definitely a weed. It's a bad thing uh, down in Texas and across the US. Uh, and it's a species, uh, this is where you type in that species name for the weed. So it has to be typed in all lowercase. We're working on just fixing that so it can be typed in uh, correct scientific case. That's uh, Amaranthus. I guess. So that's the scientific name, uh, Palmer. And uh, there's just a lack of space here that should have been fixed um, uh, today. I just don't think I've uh, deployed the most recent version of the site. So click apply. That should be okay. You might get some errors if you don't uh, have the right capitals, but they'll, uh, they'll pop up uh, and you should be able to fix them. Actually, maybe they've just done um, most of that. But yeah, try and enter it all in the case uh, for the moment anyway. Click uh, apply, click next, and that will bring you up that ag context that I was talking about. So this is where you fill it in uh, yourself as, during the upload process, uh, although obviously you can do it separately. Uh, so for this, uh, I'll go through and do that now. So the crop, it's, uh, you have three options. You have a grain crop, which are generally the GRDC crops, so Grains Research and Development Corporation, so Australian funding body that uh, supported and funded this the development of this website. And so that's why they're all listed here. Uh, cotton is also here, which is not a GIC crop, and it's also a fiber crop, but it's snuck in as a common one. So we'll click on cotton, uh, but say if you have so lentils, uh, so lentils should also be there, yep, uh, and canola as well. So we'll select cotton. Uh, you can also do other crops. Sorry, they just asked if you want to clear the form when you change between these tabs. Uh, so you, in other crops, you can type in, uh, say if you had uh, corn, uh, I don't think that's in the list there. So you'd type in uh, Zia maize, uh, the scientific name for corn. Uh, and of course, there are other crops there that aren't specified. Ginger, Zingiba, Vishnali, if you wanted to put ginger in as well. But for the moment, we'll keep that and uh, yeah, as common, but I should actually say if it's not in crop, you can select pasture and fallow because obviously there's pasture weeds and also we have weeds that are in fallow that will be annotated too. So you have these three options at the top here, which are probably the most, uh, most important. 
because that's how people search for it. And often the crop is the most uh, relevant. And we'll select, go back to the grain crop, select cotton. And so then we can start doing uh, the rest of the details here. This is the growth stage. So this is the BBCH scale. So that's the most well recognized, I guess, uh, growth stage range uh, across the world and it has one for every different crop, or it should do anyway. So this just tells us uh, how old the crop is. And then it's a bit of a, uh, a way of assessing how old the weeds might be as well, because weeds are very variable within crops. So we know the crop's growth stage and start to understand what type of growth stages of weeds might be present too. So for this one, uh, it's I think between uh, 10, which is when cut leavens are fully unfolded, and uh, 11, which is when the first true leaf is uh, fully uh, emerged. And so for those images, I think it was roughly 11. There might have been some 12 in there, um, but I think they weren't fully emerged second true leaves. You can find the best way to find BBCH for your crop is just to, to Google, uh, Google which uh, scale it is if you're not familiar with it. Then you can select things like soil color. So this is a red brown uh, soil surface coverage. It was a, a cereal cover. And uh, then you select a percentage. This tells us a bit more about how well covered that soil is. And things might perform better or worse in different types of covering situations. So, for example, if you had wood chips, or you might have a black or white plastic mulch in the case of uh, intensive horticultural production systems, or maybe there's no cover at all, maybe it's just pure soil in high intensity tillage or tilled environments, uh, then you can select that here, and that is important in the training of our grid to perform in a range of environments. So here is about 0 to 25, and then you can add things like location as well. Uh, what I've done previously is set up this uh, file, so rather than go through all of it, uh, which is slightly dry, I'll just drag and drop that file in and also show you how to do it if you do it separately. So go to upload and download form contents. Uh, you can drag and drop a JSON uh, file in here. So that's when you've done an ag context uh, separately, which I have. So I'll drag that in and then it fills out everything uh, that I haven't done so far. So you go set form and it will set the form here. We just have one issue at the moment where it won't accept negative longitudes. Uh, this is set up in Australia where the longitude is always positive. Um, so that's just one plug for anyone in North America. Uh, but that should be fixed uh, shortly. So this should have also filled out just to select cotton up here. Uh, I think other crop. Yeah. And then so we go to photography. Uh, that's information about camera models, makes, uh, lens types. So this is one important information, technical information for people who might want to use the camera that you've used in uh, deployment cases. They might have matched on the grid. Focal length, camera height, camera angle, and uh, the in sense of format size. So if you look at the technical details of the camera, they help you understand the on-ground field of view. So it gives you perspective about the size of the weeds. Diagonal field of view, so specific field of view here. Uh, I'm sure long to is also negative. <laughs> Apologies, Lorenzo, that it probably wouldn't have been the right uh, location then uh, for your data set, but that will be fixed shortly. So hopefully that uh, gets sorted out. Um, so for the specific field of view, there's a, a formula to calculate that uh, based on your sensor format size uh, and also uh, the camera heights and, uh, and other things like that. So that's just a calculated variable here. There is a, this is fairly in depth. Uh, definitely understand that. It's just important that we collect this information so we can use it. Uh, can use it later. So finally, we have things like photography description. That's just a free text entry, so you can describe how and when it was collected. And then things like lighting, this is under natural lighting, but you might have had lighting or artificial lighting involved in the collection process too. Finally, other details are things like weather, so patchy clouds, and uh, if it's been cropped to the plants, so if you have an image that's been uh, resized or adjusted just to be over the plant as you took that, or other uh, different things about like the channels involved in the camera as well. So that's the ag context form. I spent a bit of time on it, it's, it's probably the most important part, uh, and it's probably a fairly development as well. But we've got next. Hopefully that should work.
And uh, the next part now is that metadata, the whole data set metadata. And this is more administrative type thing. So data set names, descriptions of the data set. Uh, this is an important one. This just tells people when they first click on your data set, uh, what's actually, you know, so it's like a bit of a short description, a bit of a blurb about why you've collected it, what, what is there. Uh, it helps people understand uh, the context around, uh, around your data sets. Here I'd say uh, something along the lines of um, Pharma camera in Texas in the summer. Uh, yeah, it might it, it might get longer or relevant if you're talking about uh, your own data sets, maybe a couple of sentences. The license is very important. Everything on the website is licensed under CC by 4.0, and you can find that license at this, at this website. And also things like dates, uh, authors, uh, organizations, the whole range of important information that's required when uploading this sort of information. Uh, so that then people know who's done it and you can get uh, attributed for the artwork. Uh, I'll, I won't spend too much time on this one, just I'll upload again what I've done before. And again, you can also do this separately uh, if you need. So let me just find that one. Drag and drop that in and that will refill that form as well. So you've got a set form, that will upload everything. Uh, and you you'd probably add more detail if you were doing this properly, things like your ORCID, uh, so that's like your researcher ID, email address if you wanted to be contacted. Uh, this, is, this is visible though, so make sure you're comfortable with that. Uh, and organizational details, it was collected by an organization, uh, by another person. So uh, next. So finally is the uh, upload image section. This final step in the process uh, is cherry on top. You've done all the hard work and now you get to contribute it and have it uploaded and, and viewed on the uh, uh, on Win AI. So choose images. Uh, yeah, we, select, we support a whole range of different images too. So it can be uh, all standard, standard file types. These are the ones uh, that are relevant to the uh, XML files uploaded before. So it does check to make sure that they're the same number of files and also that uh, they match with each of the files you uploaded. So make sure they have the same name, just different extensions. So these are all uh, .jpgs, I'm pretty sure. Yep, jpgs. Make sure they have the same name, except for the file extension as the XML files. I'll select all 13 here, click open, and that will start the, uh, the process. So it'll take a little bit of time depending on the file size. Uh, and I should have mentioned as well is that uh, while I've uploaded these individually, so as individual images, you can also upload a zip file. So down the bottom here, it says upload image files, uh, but that can be upload images in zip. So if you have more than say 50, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend doing it via zip. It's much faster uh, and less room for error. Uh, and it does still check them, but it's just a bit of an easier process of doing it. So when we uploaded the 17,000 da image data set for deep weeds, uh, we definitely did that via zip. So uh, anything over 100, it, it removes this display anyway. So yeah, over 50, I'd probably recommend uh, zipping them to a compressed folder and then, then dragging and dropping that here. But that's all the, basically all there is to it. So we've got 13 images, done all the, the hard work up here, and uh, now we can click submit. And fingers crossed, uh, should work all right. So what you'll see is the current upload status change from uh, none, I think, or potentially whatever you had before to processing. And so now it's processing on the University of Sydney server side. So you can navigate away from the page and that's fine. It will still say processing. And then what it's doing at the moment is, is checking over all the information you've provided it. So to make sure it matches the, the schemas that we have developed. Uh, and once that's finished that process, then it will go into review. Um, so on this page, it won't appear yet, but for any administrators, there'll be a review, uh, review section where all those data sets that have been submitted uh, can be checked for quality. Uh, so all the, the relevant sections being filled out, being filled out correctly, and also to make sure those images are of uh, high quality too. Looks like that's worked fine. Um, so now it's in the awaiting review stage. Uh, I'll get an email uh, saying a data set has been submitted. Uh, you'll get an email saying your data set's in review. And uh, 
then the review process starts. So that might, that I can potentially reach out to you. So I will, I will get your email address uh, in the process. So this is my email here. But if you upload, then uh, your email will be here and I can contact you and ask questions about it or um, can converse about um, what needs to change or if it's fine. Uh, but thank you very much for, for uploading. Uh, and if we click on the data set, we should then see, oh, email just come through, we should see everything that's here. So there are, there's a citation for it. Uh, there's the uh, annotate, sorry, there's the description. I think I must have, must have saved that. Um, but that should be where your description of palm memorandum in cotton in Texas in summer would appear. Uh, just here, that's sort of the, the blurb. You, there won't be a sample yet because it hasn't been approved. But when we go to the explore tab and click on the approved version, it, it will. And then there's also the annotation statistics. So 13 images, 155 bounding boxes. Uh, and then things about the crops, it's cotton, uh, 10 to 11, uh, red brown soil color. It looks like everything's correct, obviously, except the location, which isn't. Sorry, that's a bit maybe. Uh, and then the photography, it's all down here as well. So as you highlight over, it should open up and give a bit more of a description about it. And find other details about whether you would like to include. All right, so I'll click approve on this. Uh, normally, I would download the images, run through some software just to check that the annotations are correct, but just for the demonstration, these will be deleted later. I'll click approve. And if we refresh this page, or we go to the explore tab, it might take a while to index them on this issue yesterday as well. Um, but they should, after some time, it will appear in the data sets page and you'll get an email saying it's been approved and uh, you'll be able to check out uh, the link to that data set that's been uploaded. Yeah. Hopefully it's, um, either way, that's the upload process. Um, that's, that's everything from start to finish. It's fairly, we hope, user-friendly. Uh, there are uh, just some small bugs and areas along the way, but uh, nothing too, uh, too dramatic, I don't think. But that's, uh, I'll head back to the, the presentation now. Uh, there's not much else uh, to go through. So we've been through most of this already. So this is the list of the metadata that's available that, we'll, uh, that we would have filled out. Uh, and actually, what I will do is show you the, what a, a context file actually look like, looks like. Uh, so this is, when you make an ag context file, uh, this is the information you see. Uh, so you have, Everything about the, the crop to plant or the, uh, the crop type, BCH growth state range, soil color, service coverage, all the information you've typed in uh, is, then, is then saved. I can actually show you as well is what a weed cocoa file looks like. Yeah, so this is the uh, weed cocoa file. So this is a combination of all those, uh, everything in that data set. So it's all the annotations. So every one of these is uh, an annotation, so annotation number 140, and that relates to image number 10, and uh, category zero, which is palm around around. And so uh, that's the bounding box coordinates. So that's where everything's put together. So there's 155 of those annotations, and there's also IDs for every image. This is right at the top, so this is ID nine, that file name, and these are the dimensions, uh, those sorts of things. And then down the bottom is the actual open up fully is the actual uh, ag context itself. And you see the, the amaranthus palmero, so that's the weed and that's the, the category. So that's the ag context. Done that, we've gone through the metadata and then finally uploading. So this is the checklist. So you've got to have the images ready, have the uh, annotations ready in the form that you've selected. Make sure you have the ag context file, metadata file, and then finally uh, bring it all together. Of course, you can also do this uh, during the upload process. So where to next for AI? Well, we want to make sure we improve that upload accessibility, so get rid of those uh, slight wrinkles, I guess, that have uh, pointed out along the way. Uh, make it easy to upload, so it's a really smooth process that anyone can contribute to. Uh, one thing that's interesting as well is potentially developing baseline models from the data that's there, and then we can show how your contribution has contributed 
also has improved that, uh, that model, has really benefit, benefited weed detection. And of course, uh, it's always important to encourage others to contribute. So if you know someone who's interested or has images they'd like to upload, uh, reach out, them, out to them, send these links, uh, these recordings, or um, put them in contact with me. I'd be happy to, happy to get in touch and show them how to up upload and, and to contribute to that site that is really controlled uh, based, on, uh, based on deep learning. And of course, we continue to train people in uploading. Uh, that's uh, important as well. And finally, if you have any feedback about how we I could serve your needs as a producer, or as a researcher in the industry, uh, that's also really important. So it's at the stage where feedback is really useful, good, bad, any suggestions, comments, questions, uh, it's all, all incredibly relevant. So make sure uh, you get in touch and you should have my email there as well. Finally, just thanks again to GRDC uh, for helping fund this and the University of Sydney, I guess the, all the different groups that have been involved. So Sydney Informatics Hub, Joel, Henry and Eleven, fantastic job of developing all this and uh, sorting out those bugs at uh, must no notice or really with a lot of effort. So I appreciate what they have done. Uh, Department of Computer Science, so Jiong uh, is a professor there. He's uh, helped us with the machine learning side of things. So what's relevant, what's important. And of course, Michael, who's led this project as well, um, has been critical in, in bringing this all together. And finally, all, we had a range of farmers, advisors, industry people, uh, researchers involved in this project uh, that helped us and guide us, I guess, down the right path. So we got to all the right uh, information.